idea for the drum process. So we have four variables, four control objectives. First, to keep the feed flow rate. Second, the temperature. Third, the pressure. Those are into the flash drum, in the flash drum, at the desired value. And the last one to keep the product composition. So the disturbance given is the feed temperature and composition. So first of all, for the in, for the feed flow rate, how do we how do we control that? So this this flow rate the measurement is very straightforward. So we can directly measure the flow rate because it's feed to a system. We can regard regard the whole thing as a system. Then the feed to a system is at this in light position. We can directly measure this flow rate through a flow rate sensor, for example. And then the sensor set information to your flow rate controller. And your controller will again conduct the manipulation to, a, to the actuator. So because there's a flow rate, so the actuator can be this valve. By changing this valve position, you will be able to change the flow rate of the feed stream. So this is how we control the, the feed stream. So this is the direct way you just measure the flow rate and then change the valve position. This is not no single answer when you design the control system. That's a, a something to keep in mind. You can also change different streams or change many things. It's no single pairing. So I just give you some examples. When you design your own control system, it's kind of art. You can change many things as long as it can fit the control object. But for the temperature, it's also easy to measure. You can have the because we want to control temperature in the drum, so we can directly measure the temperatures, the temperature sensor, and send the signal to temperature controller. And what do you control, what do you change to guarantee the temperature to be the desired value? You can normally change the heating volume, the heating flow rate, because here we have this heat changer, so our system can be, the temperature can then be, can, can be changed by manipulating the flow of the heating volume. Because you have the heating medium here, so you can send this temperature signal back to the flow here, because it's a heating medium. By changing this valve position, you will be able to change the heating heat changer volume to, to manipulate the temperature in the drum. Similarly, for the vapor space pressure in the drum, because this is two phase separation, so you have the vapor at the top through the same pressure sensor and the pressure controller. But where is this signal too? You can think about in the drum, you have the vapor phase. If you want to change the pressure, you can then change the bow in this vapor stream. Send your signal to this. We use this dash line to indicate the signal flow, information flow, compared with those sound design we normally have for the material flow. So you can send a signal to the vapor flow stream. By changing this valve, you can change the flow rate of the vapor and then change the volume as well. So as we said, it's no single solution to this. You can change the valve here. You can also you can even drill a hole in your drum or change the pressure through other ways, but it's all pressure control ways. So we just design the control loop that's able to meet our goal. So since we have this temperature and the pressure fixed here, then for the composition, is there any way we can control that? We can, can we control the composition of the stream? Because for this case, they have only one single inflow. So there's no such manipulated variable that can influence the flash after the temperature and pressure, after the TP are fixed already by the control system. There are no ways you can further control the composition. If you write down the degree of freedom and the phase balance here, you will see, see the parameter assets. 
the composition will not be controlled in this case because the sleep temperature and composition are also the just a disturbance, not not manipulated. As the solution, the composition is not controlled in this case. But then if they have more degree of freedom, let's think about the next case. If they have the CSTR, compared with the, the drum, they have only one single fit in. Here we have two streams. So we do a reactant and a solvent, or mix, mix two streams. Then we can think about the composition can be controlled, as long as the liquid level and the reaction temperature. Okay, you can draw some, some CSTR to think about this. system, again, the disturbance are there, the fit temperature, another is the composition of the fit. And if you want to keep the level control, liquid level in the reactor is kind of like a, a, a hold up level constant here, you want to keep it at the desired level. This is a simple loop. You can directly measure this level through the level sensor. And then use a level controller. And we represent this signal. If you want to control the accumulated level here, you can either control the inflow or outflow. So both of it will work. Or you can choose them together. But to make it easier, normally we just fix one to control the other. So you can here send the signal to this example the valve here, then to control the influence. Similarly, you can you can send the signal back. Because we have a lot of degree of freedom for control here. You can control these things. So you need to make assumptions if something cannot be changed. Like the, if we assume the solvent can, has a fixed flow rate, then you cannot control change. You cannot manipulate that. But you can change the, the valve here. That's also possible of the reactant flow. So for level control, it's a, just you, you, you change the in or out flow. And then for temperature, it's similar. You just measure the temperature and send the signal back to it, to the heat exchanger system. So for temperature, you need to change either the heating medium or the cooling medium. In this case, it's a coolant flow to cool the reactor to a certain temperature. So you just send the signal back to the coolant flow rate. So when it's a heat changing system, it's normally some flow rate as well of those temperature, high temperature or low temperature medium. So you can send the signal to this coolant flow in order to control the temperature. Okay. And in this case, if we have the temperature fixed, and then how we can control the product composition, it is possible. In this case, it becomes possible because we have two streams in. We have, although we cannot control the this direct, directly control the composition here, it's a disturbance. But because we have the solvent, so if we want to change the composition here, we can have the measurement here for the composition sensor or for a quality sensor. Just have this sensor here and just send the composition controller and back to 
to manipulate the reactive slope. So we measure the product composition. Normally, the composition is not easy to be measured at the temperature pressure because you need to pick the, the product out to do some offline measurement, characterization using some specific tools. But this can be done, like a quality control can be done in a, on a larger time scale. So you measure this composition and then send this signal back to manipulate the reactive flow. So here we assume the solvent is fixed. But if you don't if you don't assume that, you can also just change the inlet composition. So by changing the inlet composition, you're able to control the output composition. That's the idea. Okay, so this is a system design for the first one for the control system pairing. It's no single solution as we do the design problem. It's always based on your understanding of the system, you can design your own control pairing. Okay. And beyond the control concepts, we also learned in the class about how to make the process model. So here we listed two categories of modeling approach. What we have learned so far are all based on the fundamental modeling listed here. It's based on our the first principle modeling. It's based on our own global understanding of the process based on the physical laws and the chemistry of the components. So these models are not only quite complex to develop, we need the, to learn to, to be a chemical engineering student to learn the detailed process knowledge of all the material energy balance, heat mass, momentum transfer, the chemical kinetics, thermodynamics, and the properties. So all your previous knowledge will help you to build a process model. And it's not very complex. You can have large scale ODEs or even partial differential equation GDEs to describe the process, the dynamics. But those models, once you have that, it is very good fundamentally they're correct and can be used as a model to forecast, to extrapolate the, the other system behaviors or the future behaviors. So these dynamic models are very good for simulation, control, and optimization use. But normally, Beyond the fundamental model, we have another two category of models, which are the empirical model, which we will also spend the, some time to learn more about this. This is a trend nowadays because facing the big data stage, we have a lot of data from the process, a lot of data from the experiment. So this data driven model is perfect to be used as a simple approach, quicker one, to help us identify the process model. How, how we use that is to this, use this empirical model to explain the observed response. As we talked in class, we have the input U and output Y, and we want to understand what's the correlation in between. So this can be the black box model just driven by the data to understand the cause effect correspondence. So it's easier to develop even if the, someone who knows mathematics, but they have no idea about chemical engineering, they can develop the data model as well. It's based on the pure data approach. So normally it's simpler with lower order ODEs, or you can even use some machine learning models, regression models, these things to describe the process, but it's black box. And it lacks the fundamental correctness. Sometimes it's dangerous to use because it's only described what you have data for. So if you want to make some forecasting, it may be totally wrong. It can only describe what the data tells you, tells you the true plot. So this one should be used with caution, but it's very helpful for controller design because it's simpler, and the controller can help correct the, wrong, the, the ironies to make the system close the loop system performance. Okay, so this is the basic idea why we need the process modeling. And the modeling approaches are if you want to design the dynamic modeling, this is uh, what's stated in the uh, class as well. So we then will use two, two, one example um, to show how we can develop, following the steps to develop a process model. So this is question two. This is also plotted in the lecture notes. It's a simple case, we just have a tank filled with water and we want to heat the water. So this water is heat in the batch process and it's well stirred, so it's perfect mixing. We assume the temperature is, is well distributed in the vessel. And here we use the seat to indicate the temperature 
So initially, this the system and here system is at the room temperature, theta i. We can we normally use capital T T to indicate temperature, but here we use different symbols just to show you for modeling. You need to define all your symbols, all your parameters. You can use any symbols you like, but just define it with the proper meaning. So we have the theta i to be the room temperature and the thermal energy Q here is to heat up the process. So we assume this Q has a constant rate of the heating. So it's a rate of the heat has a unit of BTU per hour. So here we will use a lot of the energy balance knowledge, but we have the Q to be the unit of BTU per time. So BTU is like the energy unit. It's the same as your in the SI units or kilowatt hour, the same. So you divide it by the time units, it becomes kind of the power unit, becomes the, the rate of the, the heating energy. So they say that how you define your own your parameters, you know the units of the parameters, that say that gives you a foundation, you can do the units checking, then you write down your energy and the material balance later. Okay, so we have this. When the water temperature starts to increase, we can now neglect the heat loss because uh, this is a high temperature system, it has a heat loss, heat transfer with the surrounding environment. So this term need to be considered. Our goal here is to develop a relationship that can predict the rise in temperature theta with time. So we want to get the relationship of B theta to change with time. And here we give you this series of the parameters. Let's we assume those are the fixed parameters. The specific capacity of water, CP, and the V, the hold up volume. The U to be the overall heat transfer coefficient between water and the surroundings. And the A is area of heat transfer to surroundings. So this U and A terms are commonly used together to describe the heat transfer of the reactor with the surroundings. Then low the density of water, then I the initial temperature of the system as well, as well as the room temperature. So you can try to write down what is d theta over dt in this system. You should start with the energy balance and try to derive that relationship. <coughs> of the energy balance is because now
now it becomes an unsteady state and to balance. So the internal energy change, the, the philosophy is always when we have the energy balance is accumulation in the system equals the in minus the out, either for energy or for materials, the balance is like accumulation equals in and out, minus out. So in this energy balance, you will then have your internal energy change with time, du over dt, equals q in minus q out. So it's basically all the energy input to the system minus all the output. Can be the energy loss, can be the collection, or can be the outflow. So quantify all the terms. Then we want to get the temperature relationship. So we know that the energy, if it's uh, the amount of the internal energy, we, we know it's the MCP delta T, so the mass multiplied by the heat capacity, multiplied by the temperature difference. So in a dynamic system, because we give you the flow of the, the volume of the system, so it becomes the density multiplied by volume, rho V C T and the temperature D theta over D T. And then this is a temperature change relationship. So the right hand side should be all the energy in, in this case, just the, the heating process from Q, because this is a, the heating rate already. So we just add the Q here. Well, the heat loss from the system to the surroundings, we have the heat loss to be UA delta T. Delta T here is theta minus theta I. So this becomes our overall energy balance to describe the system. Because all the parameters here, we assume they're constant, so we can directly do the mass calculation. We just move, try to make it beautiful to, to divide in this coefficient say, on both hand sides, so we can keep the theta term has only coefficient of one. So we divide U A on both sides, becomes rho V C T by U A. This is temperature changing with time. Those Q over U A minus bit I. Okay, so it looks much better now. If we further group all those coefficients together to define some new coefficient, like this term, we can then call it some, because it has, based on its units, we can then think about what the meaning of it. Define this group this as a tau. So this one is a new tau coefficient. In this term we can define it as an A parameter. Then the overall balance becomes tau over multiplied by D theta D P plus eight minus eight. Ah, this term moving to the right. This A is on the right. So it's kind of beautiful, simple overall equation to describe the energy balance. And because here, if we do the units check, we found that this tau exactly has the units of the time, because this is a temperature changing with time multiplied by this coefficient. So we use tau to, to add the indicator before this d theta over dt. This temperature change, temperature difference, and this right hand side the A parameter also has the same unit as the temperature as you, you do the unit tracking Q over U A. Right, so this is the overall temperature changing dynamics. So if you want to say now it's no longer a, a batch process, if you want to keep the, the water flowing, what happens if I have my inlight flow and outlet flow at different temperature. Because the inlet flow is from the surrounding room temperature, so it's, it can be the temperature of eta I, well, the outlet flow has a temperature exactly the same, just from the pan, so it has the same temperature as the theta in the, in the, in the batch, in the reactor. Therefore, we will have the flowing system to be in of temperature in the I, Q in, and out to the temperature in the Q out. 
Since we focus on the energy balance, we can make the assumption that Q in equals Q out, and the level is, is the same over time. Therefore, we just let the material, the mass balance automatically hold because in equals out and no accumulation. So we just use Q with the both in and out. Now think about in this system, how will the energy balance change based on our calculation here? So it's still the accumulation equals in and out, still the energy change equals overall energy in minus overall energy out. But the in and out has more items now because it's the flow of the streams. So what we should add is that based on this previous energy balance, we have additional term here. So if we write it separately first, this is before we have only the addition to the system is a Q, but now we have another flow into the system because it's flow rate, the volume flow rate is Q, so it's a new energy into the system is Q rho CT by the temperature in I. So this term should be added to the overall energy balance. Well, the outflow is what we take from the system. So we should minus that energy. So we should then minus this same Q rho CT of temperature beta. So this, because the Q is the same, we make assumptions. So this overall term will become Q rho CT beta I minus beta. That's how we add this additional term to the overall energy balance. Okay. Then it becomes easier. Once you have the fundamental equation here, you can just group the terms together. Again, you put all the theta terms together. So it becomes Q minus UA theta minus Q rho CT theta. Based on what we discussed. 
this will be the guideline when you design your project or homework. This will be that you need to first of all state the modeling objectives and the, the end use of the model. Then you can determine how complex or how simple your model will be. And then draw a diagram of the whole process and label all the process variables on it. You should list all the assumptions, which one are the gaming parameters that does now change with time, and which are the variables that change with time, which are the, the desired level of the model, model complexity. So the first step is that determine why the spatial variation of process variables are important. Because in the basic case we show you, it's always perfect mixing with a third, with a third layer. In the new case, normally you have a spatial difference as well. So you, you may got the, the PDV sometimes because you consider the spatial difference. So that's the level of complexity you will keep in mind when you design your own model. And then you need to write the proper conservation equations for mass, components, energy, write the equations here, and then introduce more of the equilibrium relations you can add to the system. And finally, you can do the analysis, the degree of freedom analysis to make sure the process model works. Otherwise, if you write something wrong, you, you, you will have a negative degree of freedom. It won't work for you. And then simplify the model like we did to make it uh, in a consistent way to define the coefficients. And finally, last important step is to classify the input as either disturbance variables all the manipulated variables you can change. So based on this, we will further use the model for our control system. Okay, so that's this week's tutorial. I will upload the information on IDA data. Thank you.